Well, I haven't done one of these in a while. Epic book review time. I am George Crows. Thanks for being here uh, on the podcast. I haven't done this in a while. I am going to be honest with you. I haven't really been reading a ton, and I don't know why. I was traveling and speaking quite a bit over the summer, and I just my brain just couldn't take anymore. I've been really trying to read ten minutes a day. It's something I started, you know, a couple of years ago. But for the last few months, I haven't. And I really try to get back into reading at least 10 minutes a day. I I try some habit stacking, whether um, at the end of a workout, I'll ride the bike for about 10 minutes just to uh, loosen up, stretch out, and I'll read there. Or when I'm at the gym, I try to read. I'm terrible in the sauna. I can't handle the heat. So I try to read a chapter just to kind of get my mind off of it. And the book I am reading or talking about today is Hidden Potential. Uh, by Adam Grant. I'll give you the the entire title. Uh, I highly recommend this book, by the way. And maybe there's a little a bit because there's a lot of stuff that I've been writing about for a while. So it really kind of reaffirmed some of my work. And I'll talk about some of the quotes that really resonate with me and connected with me. But the entire uh, title is this. It's Hidden Potential, The Science of Achieving Greater Things. Now, I just finished writing an email about this. And uh, you'll actually see it in the link down below because uh, I'm uh, recording this. I think it's uh, September 18th, and then this won't be posted until later in October, and I finish my email for the week. And I, I like kind of having this opportunity to um, to talk about some of the things I learned and kind of see what I highlighted, but then just kind of talk off the cuff, share some of the insights that might pop into my mind as I, I'm connecting with you and writing about this. And when I, I, I look at the title of the book and really when I'm reading it, it's it could be called How to Become a Better Learner. That's really what really resonated with me. I think if you're in education, if you're not in education, it's still a great book. But if you're in education, not you're thinking about how do you become a better learner, but how do you actually put the people you serve in opportunities where they learn better. One of the things that really resonated with me, and I, I wrote a little bit about this, is um, the idea of brain writing before brainstorming and really kind of getting people to process their ideas, think about what they're sharing. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm actually doing some brain writing uh, when I wrote the email uh, through that process. So uh, I'm going to talk about some quotes that really resonate with me uh, and kind of some ideas. But the one quote that really kind of stuck out to me right away uh, and I highlighted it in my uh, newsletter. It, it's this one. It's something I truly believe. Uh, Grant says, instead of only looking for geniuses where we expect to find them, we can reach humanity's greatest potential by cultivating the genius in everyone. I remember, um, I think it was last year. This is about a year ago, November of 2023. I was gifted the opportunity to keynote the National Association for Gifted Children um, conference. Now, uh, I often share and, you know, that's not my forte for lack of a better term. Nothing really is my forte to be honest with you. So I'm just trying to share some ideas with, with people. And my hope is that, um, they find the solutions because they're the experts. I'm just sharing some ideas and really kind of, how do you leverage some of those ideas? And one of the things I remember saying in that event is, I understand the terminology and, you know, gifted children, but I I truly believe that there's gifts in every child. And part of our job is to find that. If you based my gifts on how well I did academically, there's no way you would listen to my podcast because I did terrible academically. But many of the things that um, weren't necessarily core subjects or were considered at the time are things I excelled in, whether they were fine arts, uh, whether it was sports, things like that really help not only bring out the best of me, but also shape a lot of who I am today. Now, if you're listening, you work with gifted students, I know there's some, um, you know, pushback on this and things like that. Don't, please don't focus on that. The focus is really that, how do we bring out the best in everyone that we serve? And that's what really resonated with me about this book is how do we kind of bring out the best, like I said, not only in our students, but ourselves. So before I get in some of the quotes, what connected with me about them, I use ChatGPT. And you can see ChatGPT is continuously evolving. Uh, I think years ago, this would have not, because this book was actually written in 2023. 
and um, it was like ChatGPT at the first, like couldn't really give you any information bef- prior to that. Wait, I think it was like 2020, 2021. And so you can see it's actually, it's database of knowledge is growing exponentially here. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm using ChatGPT to just do, and I, I just put in the prompt, write a five tweet summary of the book Hidden Potential. And so here's what it actually provided. Uh, in Hidden Potential, Adam Grant explores the idea that talent isn't the only key to success. He argues that growth and achievement come from nurturing potential and fostering a supportive environment. It's a pretty important thing to do in education. Grant emphasizes the importance of mindset, showing how growth mindset can unlock hidden abilities in ourselves and others. Believing in the possibility of improvement can drive motivation and performance. Here's something I really want to kind of build on in the summary. Growth mindset in a time where we have access to all the information in the world is not enough. That's why I talk about the innovator's mindset. It's what you do with what you know, not just knowing what you actually do and create with what you know. That's where you really start to kind of build in. So I think it kind of goes further than that. Anyways, uh, the third tweet, relationships matter. The book highlights how mentorship, collaboration, and community can amplify individual strengths and lead to greater collective success. We rise by lifting others. That was one of my favorite parts of the book, by the way, as I get into this, is really they talk about really developing ourselves. I feel that in education, we are in this space where we over collaborate. It's like we have so much conversation and meetings and things like this. And it's like, I just need some time to process. So what do I bring to a meeting or to collaboration if I have no time to actually think to myself? And so I think there's there's kind of a spectrum that we got to kind of be on as opposed to, you know, it's all about competition. It's all about collaboration. I always talk about competitive collaboration. Um, fourth tweet, Grant shares compelling stories and research illustrating how diverse experiences and challenges can reveal untapped potential. Embracing discomfort often leads to growth. Ultimately, hidden potential encourages readers to rethink how we identify and cultivate talents, reminding us that with the right support and mindset, everyone can achieve more than they think possible. Like I said, the book is titled Hidden Potential. It's really about how do we unlock learning in ourselves. That was really what resonated with me. So the summary there, and uh, you've probably seen, you know, me reading the summary on the screen. I, I again, I highly recommend this book. I really uh, appreciate it and enjoyed it. But here are a few quotes that resonate with me that I will read to you and share with you, and why they actually matter to me. This one might kind of surprise you. The first one um, is this one. Basic literacy makes it possible to leverage character skills more effectively, to be proactive in learning more and learning faster. Prosperity rises as people become more capable of absorbing new ideas and filtering out old ones. So why I highlighted this quote in particular is they, Grant talks about the importance of just having the ability to read and write and how it actually connects to if you can get a, a, a group of people, a community, uh, individuals to read and write, that is actually a huge indicator of how successful they will actually be. So I have been talking about innovation forever. And as much as I appreciate innovation, you cannot innovate if you don't have basic skills. The analogy that I often use is a jazz musician. And I don't know enough about jazz, so maybe I'm off on my analogy here, but just hopefully this makes sense. When I've seen jazz musicians on TV or whatever, the ones that are considered the best have the ability to improvise, to kind of make music on the spot. But the reason they have the ability to improvise is because they know the basics inside out. And even in my own work, I share a lot of same ideas over and over again. And when I'm working with a group, I often ask them like, what are some of your ideas? What are some of your challenges? Push me on my thinking. And the reason I'm very comfortable doing that is because I know my stuff inside out. The, Yang Zhao said this, and I thought it was really, really powerful. He said, reading and writing should be the floor, not the ceiling. And the reason I love that is because reading and writing is this base space that we have to get people at. But it's also acknowledging that there is a ceiling. We can go further based on this. It's not reading and writing is the end all be all of education, but it is the foundation and really kind of connecting this. And I wrote this quote in The Innovator's Mindset. 
kind of connecting, making sure that I, I didn't just say innovation, innovation, but really saying like, hey, the basics are really important to this. So let's not forget that either. So the basics are essential in our modern world. We all know this. Believe me, even as someone who is passionate about innovation and education, I still cringe at spelling mistakes. I hate them. I want kids to know their time sales and not have to rely on a calculator for simple math. The basics are important, but we need to go beyond knowing to creating and doing. That's why I talk about the innovator's mindset. Understanding how to read and write doesn't make you a writer. By contrast, if you are, are a writer, it's a given that you know how to read and write. So when I talked about this in the newsletter, I was, you know, and this is part of the process for me. I kind of just throw these quotes out and I just start writing. And that's where this kind of innovator's mindset comes in is that instead of just reading it, it's, you know, when I start to kind of articulate, I might write a few notes, but then I start going and I use my writing as a way to learn. I was reminded of this, um, what's called the Alberta Education Competency Wheel. This was done years ago and probably, I think, 2007, 2008-ish. And it, it was so far ahead of its time, but then it just got pushed aside and it's like doesn't exist but I have access I have I have copies of it and so I'm sharing this with y'all because I just thought it was I thought it was really really powerful so uh, you'll see it up on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube and if you are I'd love any of your comments you know have you read this book what like what's sticking out to you in this podcast what are some of your learning that you're taking away from this and so in the Alberta education wheel it has right in the middle it has uh, it says 21st century learner which I think is really important is that the the learner, not the learning, the learner is at the center. But then the next outside the circle, it says literacy and numeracy. So it's saying these are really fundamental things. And then it goes beyond collaboration, leadership, critical thinking, creativity. And it has, you know, what this develops in, you know, our, our, our learners. And it's kind of the first, um, uh, co- uh, there's like these uh, student competencies I'm seeing that are kind of being developed. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like that. And I just love it because it says like, hey, here's where we're trying to go, but here's the things essential that we need to get to that place. Like we can't just kind of skip over these really fundamental things. So that focus on literacy and you're seeing there's there's a lot of passion with literacy. I'm not going to get into the reading writing words. I don't honestly understand them. I'm not, I just don't want to get into something I don't really understand. But it is, I think people are really passionate about because we know that if, if our students have the ability to read and write, if we have the ability to read and write, it opens up doors that actually would not exist without them. Second quote, <clears throat> this one really stuck with me. And there, I probably, um, I think about my mom in this, I'll talk about that more in a second, but here's a quote. Kids tend to absorb foreign languages faster than adults. Yes, they benefit from greater bl- brain plasticity. The developing mind rewires more quickly than the developed one and less interference from prior knowledge. They're not entrenched in the grammatical rules of one language, but they're also largely immune to the fear of embarrassment and the discomfort of making mistakes. Children don't hold back on communicating. They start babbling as soon as they know some words. They're not scared of feeling stupid or being judged. Adam Grant. So the connection I made to this is a conversation I've been having with people. When you say to me, I'm not good with technology. There's a little bit of, I'm not good at learning stuff because what is really technology really? And when we think about this, it's really just kind of pushing buttons to see what happens. Like nobody sat down with me and showed me like, here's how you record a podcast. Like I might've went on YouTube. I might've done this. I don't even know how I learned this to be honest with you anymore. But I know I just kind of look around on the screen. And I'm like, where are the buttons? Where are the buttons? How do I find this? I often talk about, um, that when we, when um, I was a kid, I had an Apple IIc. I was, I feel this, that I was so much better with technology at that time than I am today. And the reason I feel comfortable saying that is to get that Apple to do anything, it was, you had to know programming. I don't know any programming anymore. I feel like I'm almost dumber with technology than I used to be. Cause I, cause you think about your iPhone, do you remember the instruction manual? And if you do, you're lying because never <laughs> instruction manual never came because basically they made it so simple and easy to use because uh, basically anyone could have access to it. You you pull out of the box, there's a couple buttons, you press them until you figure out, it walks you through it. And that's how technology has become. And so when you think about this, it's really, what's the difference between many kids and many adults is kids are still willing to push buttons to see what happens. That's the focus of, 
I think that that quote is that, you know, the kids aren't really scared when my son Marino falls down. He doesn't like go, Oh, I'm never walking again. He just gets up and he goes again. Cause he's not worried about it. He just goes over and over again. So I asked these two questions or share these two thoughts in the newsletter. And I said this, um, two things. Kids are often good with technology because they aren't scared of pushing buttons. So that's one thought. And the second one is, do we eventually scare students out of pushing buttons by focusing on getting the right product rather than getting better at the process? Do, for example, um, basically rough drafts, final drafts, like just red marks all over. Do they scare people to learn? Are we so scared of making mistakes that we just choose not to do anything? You know, a lot of times when People are so worried about how people will judge what you create that we kind of stop doing this. Is this something that's learned in school or is it like, hey, like we want you to kind of go through that process. So just kind of think about, you know, how we do this. Um, I wrote this in Innovators Mindset. I think it really kind of connects on on this, you know, how we stoke this curiosity in our students. We shared this. We forget that our responsibility isn't solely to teach memorization or the mechanics of a task, but to spark a curiosity that empowers students to learn on their own, to wonder, to explore, to become leaders. We forget that if students leave school less curious than when they started, we have failed them. And so that is something I think is really important to this. Do we stoke that curiosity? Do we stoke that wonder? And with that curiosity and wonder, we have to be comfortable with things not going right. Do we get back up to continuously learn? So the last quote is this one. Uh, the best way to learn something is to teach it. You remember it better after you recall it and you understand it better after you explain it. This is Innovator's Mindset, Adam Grant. <laughs> All it takes is embracing the discomfort of putting yourself in the instructor's seat before you've reached mastery. Even just being told you're going to teach something is enough to boost your learning. So I read this book and really resonated with me. But how, how I'm going to lock it in my brain is what I'm doing right now. Doing this podcast. Writing the newsletter. So even this, is this teaching? Kind of. It's kind of teaching. I'm sharing some ideas with you, sharing some thoughts. I have a kind of a humility with teaching in the sense that I don't know everything, but I'm just sharing some ideas with you. Ultimately, you create your own learning. I can't do your learning for you. You create it. But me sitting down and actually taking this information, creating something with it is where I really start to lock in these ideas. And that's what really kind of connects with me. And so the idea I shared is, you know, when we do professional learning, one of the things that we, we often uh, do, and I've seen this is a very North American thing, we'll fill people with information, just bombard them with stuff, and then 50-minute break, go pee, grab a drink, come back, everyone comes back late, we, you know, bombard you with more information, we might do some brainstorming, things like this. So I've been really kind of focusing on this notion of connection reflection time. And what I do with that connection reflection time is I'll say, for example, here's two things I'll do. First, I'll say like, hey, I want you to actually make a video and post it on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, X, whatever you want to call it. Share some of what your takeaway, like what was one big takeaway? So now that you know it's public and anyone in the world can see it, you're like, okay, hey, what was my takeaway? What is it? As opposed to just walking away and just kind of like, meh, whatever. I'm actually getting you to synthesize. And you can see that through that, not everyone has the same takeaway because we have different experiences coming in. We have different knowledge. We have different things we want to get out of the day. But just having and providing time, not saying like do it after, but providing time in the day actually gets people to really kind of synthesize and connect their own ideas. The other thing that I do is I'll actually have like a Google form and I'll say like, hey, I just want you to fill this out before we come back. And there's some questions like, what did you learn today? Uh, what's something, you know, what's a question you have? What's something you want to try moving forward? And, but then I share this, just so you know, before you fill it out, everyone in the world can see it. And not I'm sharing with the, the entire world, but if it's online, I kind of consider it public. It is that me saying that, it's like, oh, like you know, I got to be thoughtful what I write here because I know anyone can see this. So when you know other people can see what you're sharing, you're more thoughtful about it. And, you know, this is, I come back to the idea of brain writing. That's something I try to do in these sessions is do some brain writing with this, that people have time to process. And then once they actually process these ideas, then they actually have more to contribute to the group. If you think of like a group of six or seven people that you're working with, and I said to you, I'm going to just throw out any question to you on whatever topic. Typically you can identify the one or two people that are always going to start the conversation. It's not because they're the smartest people. It's because often they just process quickly. Sometimes I'm the first one to talk and it's not because my brain processes quickly. It's not because I'm the smartest person at the table. It's because I hate silence. You can see how quickly I talk, things like that. I'm so uncomfortable with silence. I know something I need to work on, but I'd rather 
just say anything than to hear nothing. It just gives me anxiety for whatever reason. So I think, you know, giving time people to process, to kind of think about stuff and to actually acknowledge that anyone in the world can see it makes you think deeper about it. Now, I always give people like if they don't post, I'm not like, you know, they're not docked marks or, you know, fired from their job or anything like that. But, you know, I think a lot, most people actually take me up on this and then they're just really thoughtful what they share. And I've learned so much from what they've shared from my talks that has pushed me in my own thinking that to, to think that in that space, even though I'm the teacher, that I create a space where others can teach me as well because it pushes us all to get it better. When you have the time to kind of synthesize and reshare your thoughts, not only does it make you better, but it makes the people who get to see them uh, better as well. Um, the quote that I also thought about this is one of my favorites. I share it all the time. It's from Joseph Zuberi. He says, to teach is to learn twice. When I'm talking about this, this is my, when I read it is learning once, when I share it is learning twice. So that's where I kind of get this idea. So last thoughts on this. I'm gonna share one more quote. Yeah, I typically share three. I know I've shared, I think four so far, but really try to dig deep into ideas. Um, it is Wednesday and I have just really been struggling with writer's block, posting ideas, things like that. And this is a quote that really kind of like shook me. And I like kind of highlight some quotes. And it said, when you procrastinate, you're not avoiding effort. You're avoiding the unpleasant feelings that the activity stirs up. Uh, the, the activity stirs up. Sooner or later, though, you realize that you're also avoiding, avoiding getting where you want to go. So for me, I schedule times where, listen, whether I want to write or not, I'm writing. Whether I want to do this podcast or not, I'm doing it. And that's really helped me is that trying to get stuff done early rather than leaving it to last minute because I think for me that causes a lot of anxiety getting this stuff done really really matters and really kind of thinking about procrastination is not like a laziness thing it's often a, an emotional connection there's a mental block sometimes and now I, I've done this I've shared some thoughts with you and now I've finished my latest epic book review <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You can check out Adam Grant's book, Hidden Potential, in the link below. Plus, I, I've actually shared links to Innovators Mindset, Innovates of the Box, because these are obviously, there's a connection to Grant's work um, and to what I'm sharing. So hopefully those books will help you in your educational journey. Create something with this. Don't just sit here and listen to me. There's something I can learn from you, but hopefully you create a space where I can see some of your takeaways from this book, from this podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you.